11 drives in a box this size, an A core 16 thread Ryzen 7 CPU, and dual 10 gig networking? Let's find out if the AU Star's new WTR Max is the Home Lab Unicorn NAS that we've all been waiting for. I've been extremely excited to test this particular NAS because, on paper at least, it's part NAS, part mini PC, part hyperconverged node. Under the hood, it packs an AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS processor from Q1 of 2024. It has eight Zen 4 cores, 16 threads. It's paired with a Radeon 780M graphics adapter. But the real treat with this unit is that you can cram literally 11 drives into this chassis. Up front in this unit, you get six hot plug two and a half slash three and a half inch SATA bays. You can pop the cover, slide the trays in, no screws needed, completely toolless. Inside, you have a removable sled that holds four NVMe slots. Two of those run at PCI 4.0 X2 and the other two slots at X1. There's also a fifth 2280 slot on the bottom side, plus a TF card reader. That gives you the possibility of mirrored NVMe for boot, also running VMs, striped SATA SSDs or spindles for speed or cold archive tier storage, all in one lunchbox type footprint. AUSTAR ships the unit with plain Windows 11 Pro, no clunky proprietary NAS interface, and I honestly like that. I removed this factory drive just for safekeeping. I swapped in my own NVMe drive and threw Proxmox VE8 on it, and it was seamless, no issues, as you would imagine. You could also have easily loaded TrueNAS scale, Ubuntu, or even VMware ESXi because, spoiler alert, every NIC in this unit is Intel-based. You have two 10 gig SFP adapters and two two and a half gig base T ports, also Intel adapter based. Now let's talk CPU. This unit has the Ryzen 7 8845HS processor, and this is circa 2024 Q1 uh, to this year. It's referred to as the Hawk Point refresh. It's a 54 watt TDP. Uh, CPU. It has DDR5 support. It has an RDNA 3 based Radeon 780i GPU. And that means you can run half a dozen VMs, transcode 4K Plex streams, and still reserve GPU cycles for light gaming or stable diffusion. And yes, it has ECC DDR5 memory that is officially supported in this unit. So your ZFS pool will certainly sleep better at night. Let's look more closely at the connectivity potential of this NAS. Connectivity with this unit is ridiculously good. As mentioned, you've got two Intel 10 gig SFP plus ports for your storage VLANs or other types of traffic, plus two Intel two and a half gig base T adapters for management or VM traffic or whatever you want to run across it. Toss in Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, USB-C, DisplayPort, HDMI 2.1, USB 3.2 Gen 2, and even an Oculink port that you can hang an external GPU cage off of for AI workloads. So the short story is the connectivity potential with this device is absolutely insane. In short, you're not gonna run out of connectivity options with this device. Now, let's see how to get into the bottom chassis to get at the RAM, as well as the factory installed NVMe drive. So you'll most likely want to lay the unit over on its side. You're going to have two of these hex cap screws that will need to be taken out of the front of the unit and the, the rear of the unit. And you're going to, after you remove two on the one side, you're going to flip it over and remove the other two screws. So you're going to see me flip this over. And now we've got it on the other side. Same process here. Apologies for the camera continuing to focus, but again, two hex cap screws, the rear of the unit and the front. So we're going to remove both of those and everything is really machined well with this unit. Everything fits very tightly and snugly. So then you just simply with your hands, you can just pull on both sides and then it will expose the internal compartment where you can upgrade the memory as well as change out the NVMe drive.
So as you can see, we've got four screws and you're inside. The bottom lid just slides off. You have total access to the factory installed memory as well as the M.2 NVMe drive. With the factory installed memory as well as the Samsung Evo NVMe drive that I installed into the unit after I removed the factory NVMe drive, Proxmox installed without any issues. Everything worked and was detected, network adapters, so on and so forth. Now let's talk about power and thermals. In Proxmox at idle, the box draws 36 to 40 watts. Now, that's definitely not an N100 or N150 power draw for sure. But remember, you've got eight Zen 4 cores and 11 drives. If you hammer all cores with the Linux stress utility, it will peak out from what I saw in Proxmox around 96 watts. Now, cooling with this unit is really nice. One thing I really liked about it is it has a factory installed fan cage that is easily removed with two large thumb screws on the back. And these fans at normal conditions, normal CPU temps, is whisper quiet. Now, as you can imagine, it helps to exhaust heated air when you have heavy disc activity. So I did hear that gently ramp up. One thing I like about this unit as well is the ability to easily get the fan tray that is on the rear of the unit out of the unit. So if you need to replace a fan or troubleshoot on the internals, you can remove this rear fan plate by simply just removing the thumb screws and then this lid with the fans just simply pops up and out. As you can see that I've just removed that and then you've got the fans exposed on the back of the unit. So really good airflow as well and, and thermal cooling as you can see with the fan configuration here. So reinstalling the fans is as simple as reversing the process. Just pop the bracket with the fans back in and then just simply reinstall the two thumb screws on the very back. Now let's talk about OS compatibility. The quick montage is you can do Proxmox, you can do VMware ESXi, you can do TrueNAS Scale, you can do straight Ubuntu, or many other Linux variations. Proxmox VE 8.x installed flawlessly. VMware ESXi 8 also detected the 10 gig and 2.5 gig network adapters. TrueNAS Scale saw all six SATA base. I also booted Ubuntu 2404, Debian, Rocky, Arch, no drama there installing those operating systems. So let's quickly talk about the pros and cons of this unit. The pros first. First of all, this thing has ECC memory support, and this is something I have not seen in many PCs or especially consumer NAS devices. It also has Intel NICs. It has sub 100 watt max power draw, it has 11 drives possible, Ryzen 7 uniform processor, you've got Oculink for future GPU use cases such as ML and AI, and the bare bones price from AUSTAR is $699, definitely a pro. Now let's talk about cons. First of all, the idle power draw is still 35-ish watts, which I would have liked to have seen lower. The NVMe lanes are also only X1 or X2, as you heard me mention earlier. So your top shelf Gen 4 drives are not going to reach their full potential. And there's no internal PCIe slot. Fan noise ramps up if you pack all six spinning discs inside the unit. However, personally, I can live with a few of those trade-offs. I think the Oculink port makes up for the lack of the PCIe as well as the fact that you've got many storage options helps to offset the lack of full potential on those Gen 4 drives. Should you buy this unit? If you want a single box that can handle Proxmox, TrueNAS, VMware, Docker, Kubernetes, Transcode 4K video, push 10 gig traffic, and slip under that 100 watt ceiling, the AUSTAR WTR Max may be the most versatile mini PC slash NAS in 2025, at least at this point, for home labbers, content creators, even for small offices. Now, what do you think about the AUSAR WTR Max? What would you install first? Would it be Proxmox? Would it be TrueNAS or something totally different? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and smash that like button if this deep dive into this really awesome NAS has helped you make the decision either to possibly pull the trigger or to hold off for something else. Subscribe to the channel for more home lab goodness 
and check out the full written review photos and power draw numbers on virtualization out too with the link in the description also definitely consider joining the home lab explorers school channel there we dive into devops into home lab learning product reviews and just have really great discussions as well as future online events well thanks for watching please do stay safe out there keep on home labbing and i will see you in the next video